Welcome to the Daily Needs. Today we look at classic films, modern cinema, and the world of professional wrestling. And today I want to talk about the 1974 film A Woman Under the Influence, um, directed by John Cassavetes and starring Gina Rollins and Peter Falk. And this is another movie just like Woman in the Dunes that kind of took me by surprise. Uh, again, read the synopsis, saw the length, two and a half hours of family drama. Ugh, okay. Fine, but it was actually very uh, intriguing and very uh, engrossing. Um, Peter Falk is great. Um, I spent the first half of the movie thinking that he was his character in um, Wings of Desire, where he's the, an angel that has chosen mortality instead. So, like, half the movie, I'm like, hey, he, he was once an angel. But he doesn't act like it. He doesn't act like it because uh, I think. Uh, he's the one who should have been sent to the mental institution. Um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with this movie, um, Peter Falk plays uh, Nick. It's Mike or Nick? I think his name is Nick. It's not going to say on the DVD case. Um, and uh, Gina Rollins plays his wife Mabel, and she is quirky and weird. And after an incident with uh, some neighbor's kids, uh, they send her to a mental institution for six months. And then when she comes back, she almost tries to kill herself again, and then she doesn't, and they figure it out, and that's the end of the movie. Um, it's not a lot of story to be told in two and a half hours, but what they do very, very well is it has almost a documentary-like feel to it. Um, not like it's shot like a documentary, there's not a lot of shaky cam, but there is some. There's moments where like some characters are a little out of focus, or you can... You can see that they're talking, and you can hear that they're saying words, but you can't understand what words they're saying. It felt like a documentary, and that, that's also added to like the opening and close. There's no major arc, like there's a bit of an arc, but it's not huge, and it kind of ends where it began. Um, and there's not a lot of exposition either. It, it takes a while, it's a slow burn to figure out who these people are, what they do. Um, but I like that. I do. Um, it feels like you just take a chunk out of these two people's lives and put it on film for two and a half hours. That's what this movie feels like. And it's really, really interesting to watch. Um, Gina Rollins is insanely good, uh, upon fully intended. Um, her little tics and uh, like little gestures and uh, quirks are peppered out so nicely in the first half that there's a, a scene when she comes out uh, when she comes back from the hospital and he tells her to start doing those quirks you realize like oh she hasn't been doing them like those were a part of her like everyday speech in the beginning of the movie now she's not doing them um, and her whole performance is great there's so much emotion coming out I think it helped that her actually the actress's actual mother played the character's mother and I think she's married to the director and his Mom played Peter Falk's mother, so it's like kind of forcing some realism in there. But I like that. I like when movies do that. I said the same thing about like Sunset Boulevard. Um, but because of that realism, there's so much emotion behind their eyes in every scene and everything. It's just pulled out by the camera in a, in a beautiful way. And some moments that would take, you know, a minute and a half to show the scene in another movie. The scene will be 10 minutes in this film. Um, the one that sticks out to me is when they send her to the, the mental institution that night they do. Um, she's the one acting the most sane, in my opinion, because her husband, he's just yelling about everything and threatening to slap her, and, and he, multiple times throughout the movie, he's like, I'm gonna kill you, and I'm gonna kill the kids, and, he uh, pulls the kids out of school one day, throws them in the back of a truck and drinks beer with them. Like, it's not cool. And then his mom is just acting like a, a nut as well. And she's, like, just telling her how much is wrong with her. And then, like, doctor, aren't you going to give her a shot? Like, she's already freaking out. Like, what are you doing? And she's just, you know, she's just having an emotional breakdown. I, I feel like this movie, if it was made today, would be handled very differently. Um... There definitely wouldn't be electroshock therapy mentioned. Um, and I don't think... If these characters did the same actions today, she wouldn't be going anywhere. He would be going probably to prison or at least to court over the abuse and stuff. So it's like... 
I guess it's a, a uh, the time that it was made is from the 70s, so it's whatever the phrase is, a product of its time in that sense. Um, but still very, very good movie. Really enjoyed watching it. Also on Hulu. Um, in the Criterion section right next to Woman in the Dunes. <laughs> Uh, alphabetical order. Um, I think there's anything else I want to say about it. Just strong, strong performances and a strong script. Um, the dialogue is very true to life. That added to it feeling almost like a documentary. It's just the dialogue is that strong um, and that realistic. That's all I gotta say about Women Under the Influence. Tomorrow is the last film from Roger Ebert's Great Movies book. That's it. We're done. The movie is written in the wind, or written on the wind. Can't read my handwriting. But uh, that's tomorrow. Until then, you can like, share, and subscribe. You can leave a comment in the comment section below, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Daily Neats. And until tomorrow, bye.